This video will show you how to view and use the data for state and district assessments that you find on homeroom dashboards. Depending on your user role, the data that you see or the containers might look a little bit different, but the data will be available and, and in a similar way. If you start here at the table of contents at the top, I want to use this to help us organize and think, uh, understand a few things first before we look at the data. First, you'll see that there are several containers that you'll have on your dashboard for STAR. Um, if you're a school that uses iReady, you'll have that as well. Um, several containers related to SBA and a couple of containers related to the state science assessment if um, that's done at your school or your grade level. The reason that there's multiple is because they're doing multiple functions. For each type of assessment, there's one container called the cohort summary, so star reading cohort summary and star math cohort summary, and that's the top container at the beginning of that list of assessments. The cohort summary gives you an overview of a student group and how they've performed on that assessment over time. So if you're looking at the sixth grade class on their star math, you can see how they did this fall, but also how they did throughout their fifth grade year on star math as well. And then the other containers that follow for each assessment go into more detail on one specific test window. Uh, so for star fall reading assessments, you'll be able to see how did all the students in your class or at each grade level do in star fall just this fall reading. And then you'll see tabs there also that disaggregate that data. So you can look at how did my students on IEPs do on their star fall reading or students in TBIP, things like that. So it really digs into just this certain test window. And as the year goes on, you'll see those add more and some will be hidden to show star winter reading will be a new container. And we'll probably eventually hide these that show the last spring scores. The other thing in the cohort summary, I'll show you, there's a, there will be a, a tab that you can look at every student's individual score and how they've on their own done over time on that assessment as well. So that's the same for every type of district and state assessment, it has those same, um, the same pattern of the containers and the data. The exception to that is ELPA, and I'll put out another video that will tell you more about the ELPA container, because those are a little different for their domain scores. I'm gonna go ahead and click down to the SBA. What I want you to notice is that this is scrambled data to hide st or protect student privacy, but I want you to notice I clicked on the SBA ELA cohort summary. So you can see this is showing the sixth grade cohort, how they did on their third grade assessment, and then how they just did on their fifth grade assessment that they took this fall. I can see the seventh grade ELA cohort and the eighth grade if I click to each tab. If I wanna see who are those students that performed at that level, you can click on um, anywhere on the bar graph and it will pop up, open a list of who those students are. You can also download that list and save it. Although that way of downloading will not save the actual data, it will just be a list of student group. If, uh, for example, if you were planning an intervention. Again, these are all scrambled pictures and scrambled names, so this data is hidden to protect students. As you go over, you can see the multiple tabs here. The last tab in the cohort summary containers shows the individual students, and it will have columns, kind of like a spreadsheet, to show how they've done on each assessment over time. So you can hover over the title to see it in more detail, and you can see there's many blanks because this is showing um, for a, a whole group of students at multiple grades. Some of them have taken the assessments in certain grades and not in others. To download this so you can actually sort and filter the data as you would like, you can click on the gear in the corner. And then I always just have to play around with these. Um, you just click on them. I always look for the one that opens up with this menu here because that will let me um, add other things. If I want to say who's the teacher, or if I want to add a note about gender, race, home language, or what services those students are in, in addition to the assessment data that they have, that I can do that when I download and it downloads as an Excel spreadsheet that I can sort and filter down to more specific data and information that I want. On these individual student scores, you can also sort and filter within the container by using the gears here or the filtering button here or searching for something. Uh, however, that information will not be saved if you, and there's no way to print it with the filtering that you've set up. So my recommendation is if you're going to do a lot of sorting, sorting and filtering or not, unless it's something real quick to download it as a spreadsheet. So that's the cohort summary container. The other container I wanna show you is the 
container that shows the more detailed data and disaggregated data about the specific test window. So in this example, this is the SBA ELA fall assessments. And because I'm looking at this at a school level, I can see the students for each grade level in each band. And, um, and then you can see there are tabs next to it, which show how the data disaggregated. Uh, so I can click on those to go and view the disaggregated data for that assessment and see which student groups are performing better and others which are struggling. In some of these, it can be hard to read what the tabs show. So you can click on this drop down on the right hand side to read them more easily. And then the other thing that you can do is sometimes if you accidentally click the X here at the very at the right on the top of the container itself, you can just click refresh and they'll all pop back up. You can also refresh your page. The wonderful thing about Homeroom is that you can't do anything permanent, uh, which has its pros and cons, but it means you can't mess up. So feel free to click around and um, if you get lost, just refresh and start again.